at least. Good morning, one and all. Thank you for um, accepting this invitation to join one another training session conducted on behalf of the BCA Chennai chapter. Um, as a chapter, we strive to do a session at least once a quarter. And uh, this quarter, we have the privilege and the blessing to host a training session by one of the pillars of the BCM field. He describes himself as a teacher, a speaker, an author, an independent, qualified independent director, conference convener, and a mentor. Uh, when I read through his profile, I could find all the letters of the alphabet there. ISO 22316, ISO 22301, ISO 31000, BS 11,200. And there are, we need not describe him. The name says all. Daman, sir. Daman Dev Sud, sir. Thank you. Uh, Daman, sir, will first give us a glimpse of ISO 31,000. He will discuss some challenges based on his experience. His discussion, he will demonstrate the depth to which one person can go while managing risk with live examples, being the COVID. Um, he will sprinkle his sessions with a lot of examples, case studies, and some live polls. Daman, sir, over to you. Thank you very much, Bala. And to you and to everyone. Professionally, please keep it simple. Daman is okay. Daman, sir, Mr. Daman, not required. Daman is okay. Professionally, it's okay. Thank you very much. So we'll start immediately. I'll start sharing my screen and... and the discussions will be based on the slides that have been shared. Can you see my screen? Someone say yes, no, please. Yes, sir. We are able to see your screen. Thank you very much. So, Bala said, I will say a lot about me, um, saving time. My suggestion is please stay connected. You initiate LinkedIn Connect, please, because I have exhausted my weekly limits. I do every week immediately. I'll accept the invitation immediately. There's a lot to learn from each other. This session we have planned for one and a half hours, but learning is forever. I'm a lifelong learner myself. Even today, even if I'm delivering, I'll be learning a little bit for sure. I'm sure about that. I'm a fellow of BCI and a fellow of BCS also. I'm touching 9,500 hours of training teaching and I've gone across company countries. So what I'll be speaking will be based on my knowledge, what I've read, based on my experience of being an executioner. I have dirtied my hands myself before becoming trainer and consultant, auditor, assessor, author, speaker, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot will be based on the experience. As you said, I'll be picking up some cases as well. I'll attempt to keep it inter interactive. My request is when I ask questions, please answer the question. I have built in some live polls. When I launch those, please participate, respond to those. The topic we have kept for today is operational risk management. And I had also said, if you all would like to pick up a e coffee or tea with the month. Thank you very much. First call in front of you. I hope it's on your screens now. A risk management and operational risk management, it's same, just two different names. Yes, no, I do not know. These are your three options. Fourth one you can ignore. That's a mistake for me while creating the poll. Um, I'll choose a third one. I do not know. Uh, yeah, you just create your option there. I'll share the results also. In few seconds, I'll close it. So 30 seconds, roughly, I'll keep the poll on because there are not too many people. I see if I have just 16, 17 participants only. All right. 
I hope the results in front of you. 8% saying yes, it's same by 83% are saying it's not. Which is the correct, right? Both are different risk management and operational risk management. By the way, there is no rule about it. We keep giving for some reasons, we keep adding more names, right? They may be another one, enterprise risk management. There may be something I'm going to be touching upon, integrated risk management or GRC, etc. etc. There'll be some differences, but generally overall, we need to do risk management. I'll take it like that. Thank you very much. I didn't do this test, so let me check whether this works or not. Is the video clear? Yes, sir. And the audio also? Audio is also clear. Great. It's about eight and a half minutes. I may stop it in between some point, logical point. There are three primary risks in banking. What are the primary risks? Credit risk, market risk, and ops risk. And historically, it is credit risk. You know what it is. A bank gives a loan. The person goes bankrupt. OK, they have lost their money. OK, that's credit risk. And when a bank gives a loan, they have to find out if the person they give the loan to is actually going to pay it back. That would be nice. So that's credit risk. You know what market risk is? They are going to invest money that they have in, the mar in some market. It can be any type of market, equities. Uh, no, fixed income or whatever, something will happen in the market or maybe some foreign markets, there is market risk. And then there is ops risk. And by the way, there are other, uh, the, the regulators are interested in these three risks. So the big regulators of all countries actually, big they want to see of a bank, what are you doing, uh, how are you doing, how are you measuring your ops risks, uh, these three credit risks. Okay. Just to tell you a little bit, to tell you a little bit of where ops risks fit in the whole thing. The primary risk events on a company level are these three risks here. I come from an operations management area, and that uh, I think ops risk is that's the most important. By the way, there are some propagation effects of the, these risk events. What are the propagation effects? If there is too much, too much risk and things don't go your way, there can be for a company there can be liquidity risks. So that's sort of the ensuing risks. Liquidity risk or reputation risk. You know, when, uh, wh what happened with uh, the breach at JP Morgan Chase, that they lose 70, mil 70 million people and small businesses, all their, all their information. Uh, the reputation of, you think, hey, listen, JP Morgan Chase, you're a nice bank, but do you really know what you're doing? Uh, so there is some risk, uh, reputation risk. That's sort of a follow up risk. That's usually, it has time wise a couple of months that it will take to hit. And then you have an industry level risk, because if too much liquidity risks happen with too many companies, there can be a systemic risk, there can be contagion risk, and that can be an industry wide risk. So this is a way of looking at risks. But this is a way of looking at risks the way uh, from an operations management point of view. Let's look at what is the definition of operational risk according to Basel II. All of you know what I hope all of you know what Basel 1, Basel 2, and Basel 3 are. It's the risk of a loss resulting from inadequate or failed internal processes, people, or from external events. That's so you have. So this is a professor talking about operational risk management. We had a glimpse. Another definition of the is a continual cyclic process, which includes risk assessment, risk decision making, and implementation of risk controls, which results in acceptance, mitigation, or avoidance of risk. And this is the definition that we have been using in DCM also. That is in ISO 31000. In any risk management, we need to identify, evaluate, and mitigate. And for that reason, I may like to say, it's same risk management and operational risk management, same. Maybe because size has increased, complexity has increased. So one person is not able to manage, we install another person and we give another title. This is how I will take. ORM is the oversight of operational risks, including the risk of loss, 
resulting from inadequate or failed internal processes and systems, human errors, or external events. This again tells me same risk management. Even in DCM, if you say RA, and M portion will come into strategies. So no debate here on that point. We take care of flood fire earthquakes all. Those are external events. Those are being taken care of here also. So it's same according to me. Keep it simple in life. As you grow, as you mature, as your needs increase, add complexity. There's no end to complexity. Unlike other types of risks like market and trend risks that the professor also was talking about, Operational risk became the focus area of the top management relatively late. And this may be the reason that maybe it is being talked separately. And this is all from Wikipedia. I've told you the source also. Within India, for the financial sector, we know the regulator is the central bank called RBI. That has defined it like this. Operational risk has been defined by the Basel Committee, so they are going, RBI is going by Basel, on banking supervision as the risk of loss resulting from inadequate or failed internal processes, people, and systems, or from external events. That's all. All types of risks are covered here. This definition includes legal risk, but excludes strategic and reputational risk. And I may disagree with that. I will say, all risks need to be covered, need to be taken care of. Also quickly showing a typical structure of operational risk management organization, again, according to RBI. We wouldn't spend much time, but quickly we see some names at the top. We see board of directors, so that's where the reporting is. There may be, or there is expectation of an RMC. Many companies use these terms, the risk management committee. Then we have different types of risks, so different types of committees. So those are lower level committees, and there seems to be an operational risk management committee also. Then we see chief risk officer, CRO, we have been saying operational risk management department and operational risk management specialist, and they may be champions, etc. etc. This is how an organization would look like. Quick look at ISO 31000. Current version is 2018, which is the standard about risk management, but a little different from ISO 22301. 22301 is a certifiable standard. Organizations can get certified to ISO 22301, like 9001, 14001, 27001 also. But 31,000 is not a certifiable. It means organization cannot get certified to 31,000. This is a guidance or guideline document in which this is one main diagram from the standard I've picked up. This standard is made of or talks of principles, framework, and process. We see clause four, five, and six. That's all in the standard. Value creation and protection. That's why we should be doing this management as simple as that and in any organization and any program we need a lot of commitment from the top management so there is clause 5 which says leadership and commitment the process in shortest terms we can say this way clause 6 we see at the right hand side i need to identify all possible risks for me no one knows all so as many as possible. And then you could spend a lot of time on this if I was teaching you risk management. I can do up to one, two, and three days discussion only on risk management. Going quickly, so I need to identify, I need to evaluate. Why? Because that identification could have resulted 50, 60, and no one can focus on 50, 50 risks. So we need to look at the prioritized risks. So I need to evaluate, which we do based on the likelihood and impact. And then we pick up top three, four, five, ten, based on my capacity. And then I need to go to treatment or mitigation. Communication is very important in any program. Communication is very important in risk management also. 
I am assuming many people, if not all people, understand BCM, are experts in BCM. And one of the steps, one of the terms that we use is interested parties, which is generally just the replacement of stakeholders in the past, but means much more than stakeholders. And again, I do a lot long detailed discussion around understanding interested parties. So in risk management also, you need to have interested parties and you need to manage them. You need to have communication, appropriate communication with your all relevant interested parties. And it's not one-time activity. So a regular monitoring, a review, governance has to continue, update has to continue. Risks will not be stationary, will keep changing. Some new risk, risk may appear, some old risk may die or the priority could change because the impact or probability changes. We'll keep in mind, we should keep in mind that probability doesn't change easily, should not change easily. It would have, could have come to some of you, many of you, organizations, based on the COVID-19 pandemic, Daman, go back, change your risk assessment. Probability, what's the probability of a pandemic? I used to say, a pandemic happens once in 35 years, but it has happened now. So do I make it priority one, likelihood almost point nine, actually one, it has happened. Not so easily. What we have seen is that the last one was about 10 years ago, the swine flu, and this one, the definition once in 35 years appears to have been broken, but it's only one that has happened in 10 years. We need to wait and watch. Then only we will change the probability or likelihood. Once again, probability word has been is being used less. We say likelihood. Likelihood doesn't change so easily. That's what I'm saying. And I talked already about this, the last one, the process. I'm repeating, identify, evaluate, mitigate, keep people involved and informed. In any program, in any organization, one of the biggest challenge is communication, that we don't communicate enough. And then you may find, the, the one in my company is over communication. I would say over communication is better than no communication or less communication, trust me please. Then I also say we know Crisis, emergency, and BCM. But I believe this management is older than those. Maybe millions of years, thousands of years old. The day we were born, my way of saying, the day we were born, we started managing risk, even when we were not wearing clothes. When there were when there were animals around us right so while it's the oldest one according to me i'm saying i still find challenges with respect to risk appetite when we talk of risk management you will have to talk of risk appetite the challenge that i find this is again i'm saying i'm not saying one company i've gone across companies and countries based on those experiences i find people do not know their risk appetite which is not good then, right? So I wouldn't say it's a failure. I don't use that point, that word in my life. Right? I don't use problems. I say challenges, my way of saying. So similarly, not a failure, but gap or area, point, opportunity to improve. If you are doing risk management, you need to know your risk appetite. Or you say, no, the man, we know. Who knows it? One, two, three people in the company. Even that is not good. It needs to be published. Not to the whole world, but at least to relevant interested parties. Relevant internal interested parties at least should know. Okay. It is known. It is done. It is published, but it's not used either in this management or anywhere you would be using it. So if it's not used, I still find this is opposite to improve or the value is too old. It was established five years ago, six years ago, your business might have changed in five, six years. 
Now the requirement is not that it is updated every year. But did you review it? That's the question. You may say, yes, Daman, we review every year, we review it. And in three years, the value has not changed. Good. I'm happy. But audit is all evidence-based. So I'll just request, can I see the evidence that every year it was reviewed? There should be some evidence you should be able to show me. And in which decision was that the risk appetite is not changing. Then it's okay. Next gap could be, so far you have passed. You have risk appetite. It is known, it is published, it is used also. You are able to show me all those evidences. It's not too old either. It has been reviewed and it's current up to date. Next question is, so how did you find it? How do you establish your risk appetite? And that process may not be present. People start telling me stories. That's good, but that's not good enough. It has to be a, a written down, if we say in the, the way standards would talk, documented process, which would mean to me, uh, written by someone, reviewed by someone, approved by someone, then published, used and maintained up to date. And if in your quality management system, you have a document management process, this process also following that document management process with respect to even the naming, numbering, and maintaining the versions, etc. Cetera, et cetera. That's what having a process would mean. And I see, I find that that process is missing. You go another step. Even today, I'm surprised by the way, at this one, even today, even some of large corporates in the world do not have a risk management department or function. I'm surprised and they are doing business and they are doing well, perhaps. Perhaps I'm saying, I'm not sure. Or they could be doing much better if they had this department or function established. I believe this is obvious. If you become auditor, I am auditing and you're auditing me on risk management, then after some time, you would like to see my risk register also. And the gap I see is, you are able to show me the risk register, but the question is, so then what is your risk management process? How do you manage risks? Again, if you start telling the story, that's not good. There has to be a documented process or methodology, which I find missing. So that is once again a gap or point to improve upon or area to improve upon. Next level, you are able to show me the process and the risk register both, risk management process and risk register both. But the moment I read this, I find that these both are not in sync. You're not doing what you have written that you would be doing. So once again, an area to improve. And this happens especially over a period when you have been doing it for long. Some organizations have been doing this for 30, 40 years or so. Even in 10 years, even in three years, some gaps would start appearing in any organization because we are human beings. Daman did this, Daman has moved out. So the next person knows half of the story. We have been maintaining risk register. That's what I do now. Let you ask process. I don't know. We go deep. Oh yes, on internet, we are in the repository. We are able to find a process, but we have not looked into it ever since Daman left. Such gap starts appearing over a period and this is not good. So that's why I wanted to bring those out. Next poll coming up for you. Look at these two figures that I'm showing you. And please tell me which one looks like a risk register to you, A or B. And I request maximum participation, please. Only 62% people have voted so far. So if you would like, please go ahead. Any survey is as good as the number of inputs to the survey. I'll stop in a few seconds. 87% responses, great, thank you very much. Results in front of you, 
and you are right if you say b is a risk register so why is a not a risk register someone can unmute and speak i believe everyone has got the authority to unmute you can switch on the camera also if you want out of those who have said b is a risk register why is a not a risk register what are your views around that anyone go ahead no, man, i think a is more of just jotting down or just making a list it doesn't tell you you know what is that as the b clearly says you know it kind of tells you if you have an existing control in place which could have prevented whether it is the control that kind of uh, was control design is an issue or an execution of the control is an issue all those things kind of come out in the b but a is more of just maintaining a repository but doesn't give you any value addition at all okay anyone else specifically likelihood this is usually speaks of the likelihood when you, respond, when you respond please tell your name also this is avinash here my name is avinash yeah. uh, specifically it tells about the likelihood of the risks likelihood and the impact B. so that uh, is, is usually speaks about the risk okay. okay thank you very much now the reason i put it here was again it's a surprise but this is a fact a consulting assignment bcm consulting assignment and generally one of my first questions to the any client is do you have an existing risk register yes the one we have thank you very much this was a very small organization just 100 people but an investment bank which means number 100 only but they would have been playing in billions of dollars of our money right the one this is our head of risk now head of risk is head of all departments are directors which means number 2 senior people can i have your research please and he he shared a with me what happened what time date who did what this is what was in their excel sheet called risk register and i was speechless this is an incident to log to me not a risk register but how do we tell he is a client He is number two in the company. He is head of this. I'm head of this. I'm a consultant only. I was speechless. I took a couple of minutes to compose, and somehow politely I told him, it "Seems to be reactive to me. Good practice is being proactive." And this person said, "The moment you ask for register, what do I register? I would register only what has happened." I was speechless second time. and it reminded me it reminded me of our attendance registers he is right i will mark my attendance only when i reach so it happens and then i register again i took a couple of minutes of being speechless composing myself explain and they agreed yes the man we agree with you proactive and that time onward they started maintaining two risk registers a according to me is incident log they didn't agree to change the name but they were saying now we go ahead with consultant suggestion to have a risk register like this also so live case it happens i've said i've found even large corporates even the department doesn't exist as of today so how are they managing this becomes a question to me in life whatever you want to do there should be a process for that so as of now we are talking of professional life while well, the principle can be applied in our personal lives also and within professional life also we are looking at risk whether operational or non operational we will see that little later but risk we are talking of so there has to be a process a documented process which means written reviewed approved published used when you use a process it should produce some output so that output is also published not only the process the output is published and if it's published then that needs to be used also why have you created this output you need to use it and then over a period this output is reviewed and defined if required and over a period even this process is reviewed and refined if it okay so that's what i would like to say About risk management process, also we need to have. 
I've given you the source at the bottom that some examples of operational risks. While I'm saying all risks are same according to me, fall into the same basket, but still, if a domain has been created separately, someone is saying like that, cyber attack, human error, regulations, outsourcing, talent retention, digital disruption, IT implementation, data analytics, cyber fraud, organizational change and existing work processes. These would fall into the basket for operational risks. Another view, again, source given at the bottom, top 10 operational risks in 17 and 18, how have they shifted? Some comparison done by someone. And if we see organizational change, exist in both, but in 18, it went a little down. We also see something related with fraud exists here. Theft and fraud has gone up. Regulation was number two, but it became number three. So some changes happening, but we would see generally the baskets are same, similar. Studies, data available from Two years, 17 and 18, I wouldn't have current 2021 data not yet, or even 1920 not yet. As said, I'll discuss with the help of some cases and examples. So first example coming up, operational risk management. Alec, Alec is a life insurance company and Raman is a data entry operator. While creating a new application record, he entered applicants per month salary as 100,000, 1 million, instead of 100,000, which the applicant had mentioned in his form. So some of you may understand this life insurance business. Right? Whatever insurance you ask for is not guaranteed to you, even health insurance, by the way. Right? Whatever insurance cover amount you ask for is not guaranteed to you company does its own risk management. They evaluate your application. And I may say, I want 10 crore rupees of life cover. That's good for the company, but they need to see whether the man has the capability of paying the premium. So that's why they asked the salary. So the man entered 100,000, but Raman typed in 1 million. What is the impact? This is a mistake, this is an error. What is the impact? Anyone, quickly, unmute and say name and say, what is the impact of this mistake or error? Uh, Daman, this is Shirdas. Yes. Uh, so one of the biggest uh, risk here is like, you know, the incorrect evaluation of the life's worth because of this uh, annual much. income miscalculation. Thank you very much. A policy is issued in error. The man should not have been issued a policy, right? But there is huge difference between 100,000 and 1 million. So based on that, company issued. System wouldn't know. While processing the data, system wouldn't know. Right? So this is an example of operational risk, according to me. Second example. Anna is a technical analyst who works on applications of her organization, IT applications, right? Operation departments use such applications to produce output. She created an application recently for the accounts department to create invoices. Case clear? At the end of the month, the actual cash flow was more than that flowing into this application. Outflow was more than inflow. Upon more investigation, the team found that one of the account payable inputs was getting doubled after execution. So mistake in a program. Possible? Such error is a technical error that creates operational risk and can be identified only upon considerable effects. It happens, we all know. There may be defects. Even if you think of the biggest names, assume one name with due respect, Microsoft. When they 
issue a new product to us do they issue defect free i would like to say see hands and faces if someone says yes that microsoft releases defect free products to us the customers no there is no guarantee by the way they release products with known defects also and sometimes on the product information catalog we may be able to find that information as well they are being nice they are being honest and fair these are the known defects in this product but we are still launching right so sometimes then it comes out many when we users start using then some defects come out right? so this is an example of operational risk based on a technical glitch based on a human mistake while coding you may think this is my personal it appears to be my passbook it seems i maintain passbook manually just spend two seconds to understand the entries the last one typing mistake it should not be next income it should be net income i should have a saving of how much 120000 according to these entries but i received the message from the bank on my phone that the amount in my account was only 100000 oh my god shock after tallying all expenses and income i realized that i had missed out on a donation of 20000 that i make every year in this month so once again an example of operational risk in accounting i made a mistake thus there is an operational risk of data inclusion for accurate output i missed one entry there should have been one more entry of 20000 debit side example number 4 which is human error a mechanic leaves a tool inside a jet engine resulting in the blowout of the engine during flight it could be that serious the aircraft is able to return to the airport but the passengers are shaken i believe it's obvious the airline's reputation is damaged they face a government investigation and the engine must be completely replaced operational risk with a human error next one operational risk with respect to it let's look what is in store here a critical network device experiences an error that results in a 4 hour outage for the website of an online retailer always attempt to see the understand the case please the revenue is lost and customer satisfaction declines for the month what happened this is an accidental damage to it equipment how important your website is to you in this case website went down outage was 4 hours so the question here is for yourselves how important your website is to you or if you have done the business impact analysis which we say impact over time if your website is on for a minute and are a week a day what would be the impact do you sell online right so many of us you know you will find that i also have my website today i wouldn't say that it's not important to me i wouldn't say it's not critical to me but i do not sell online so even if that website is down the impact may not be too high but it will depend upon what organization you are or what else is there on your website even if you don't sell but what else what other information do you publish to the world openly on your website you have to look at that impact over a time if your website is on for a minute hour or day next example different type once again i'm picking different types the settlement process for an investment bank 
is only designed for regular market volume. Please stay in this. The process is designed to take load of a regular market volume. One day there's a market crash and volume on the stock exchanges spike to 50 times the normal volumes. The settlement process fails because it involves manual steps and the bank doesn't have enough trained staff to complete the processes in timely fashion. Customers are impacted as their orders don't show as settled within the regular time. The bank suffers a loss of a reputation. So not necessarily a financial loss, but a reputation loss for sure with its customers and trading counterparties. Insufficient processes. First, the process was not capable of handling 50 times. Yeah, but 50 times never happens. My process was designed, my system was capable of taking 10 times. I can prove it. We had done the test. Okay, understood. But then there could be second way of then do it manually. If process has gone down, system is down, systems can crash. We know that the reality it has happened so many times in different companies, different companies, different stock exchanges. If we take the same example, similar example, it has happened. Then people should be able to do. But then we didn't have enough trained as it is available in this case. The bank doesn't have enough trained staff to complete the process. So this is another different types of operational risk. Number seven, a number of students deposited admission plus annual fee at a university. I doubt there are any students here in the group today. Maybe there is, right? But even if, not we all were students at one point in time, or some of us may have our son's daughter studying today. So the case still may be relevant. We will be able to understand this. A number of students deposited admission plus NLP at a university and then got transferred to another preferable university. I hope you are able to relate to this. This is a real case once again can happen in our lives. A refund would be due to them. A customer service process breaks down due to a lack of training. These students are mistakenly told they do not qualify for refund. The students complain to the ministry who launches an investigation of the university. University faces fines and negative publicity. So in this case, there is a penalty financial loss also. What is the cause? What has happened? What risk has happened? Process has failed. A refund was due, but the message went to them that it was not due. Whether it was a manual message or whether it was system generated message. So in India, we know there is an authority called AICT. They control all universities and they may have some role to play in this case. Next example, which hopefully is the last example, and then I'll go to some cases. Quality risk. An electronics company establishes a quality assurance process that catches 99.99% of defects in their vacuum cleaners. They therefore expect that 0.01% of their products will have a minor defect. Clear? Simple? No one is perfect? The best is 99.99%, which means there is a chance of failure or a defect. 0.01%. And they establish a return policy. So what do we say? Okay, if you find a faulty product, return, we replace it. I'm a good company, isn't it? That allows customers to get a replacement product should they discover a problem. But how are you doing your risk management? You need to have some arrangements, you need to have budgets, you need to budget this, that some product is going to come back to you, even if it's one in one million, even if it's 0.01%. The company budgets for such a return, returns in their cost forecast. Insurance companies have cooling off period, if people understand what is cooling off period, insurance company, the month, this policy issued to you, but you have about 15 days if you don't like, because in 15 days, perhaps you go through the terms and conditions. 
which generally none of us do. It's fine print. We don't even bother to read. Even if we attempt to read, by the way, we may not understand it. But at least company is saying as a good company, there is cooling off period, 15 days. If you want to return, return and we will refund your money that you have paid to us. So they need to take care of you know, how many how many policies are being returned to us in this cooling off period. Because if it increases, this volume of policies being returned in cooling off period increases, they are losing a lot of money. They need to return my money, I'm the customer, but they have spent some money already on it in administration of this policy. The company starts earning not immediately, not in the first month, not in the first year, maybe after the second, three, four, third, fourth year only. Before that, these are all expenses only. So that's why attempt by both companies on quality of the product would be to have least, to have least returns. That's why quality is so important. What is their rate of return cancelled policies? This is what Al was discussing. And how do they manage that loss? So about eight examples taken. Let's go to some cases now. First one, Pawan is working with Alec. You remember Alec is life insurance company. He is involved in a financial fraud. Don't tell me the one. This is not possible in my company. No one. No one. Please don't tell me. It can happen in any company. So Pawan is working with Alec and is involved in a financial fraud. You know this, but you do not report or escalate. Please understand the cases. Question is why not? Any expressions, impressions, any views? Assume I'm not Daman, I'm Bhavan. We both are working with Alec. We are colleagues. I've done a financial fraud. You know it, but you don't report or escalate. Why not? That's the question. Anyone? Unmute and speak, please, if you have any views. <clears throat> One, uh, hi, this is Musa here. Yes, Musa. One thing would be, uh, be uh, Awan and Alec are both uh, good colleagues. They know it, each other for a long time. Yes. And he's, <clears throat> maybe he's not willing to report that. The other possibility could be he might be involved in some way or other way. All right. <laughs> okay. I believe this is a, also an operational risk. Pick up case two. Madan is working with Alec. You have seen him behaving inappropriately with a female colleague. And once again, please don't tell any Mandaman this is not possible in my company. We know sexual harassment cases have been on a rise, they are, they are specialist people, they are, they are specialist departments to manage that. Right? Someone tells me the one there is a center also for that. Prevention of Sexual Harassment Act. Or there is an act around that. So Madan is working with Alec. You have seen him behaving inappropriately with a female colleague. You also observed that the female colleague was not comfortable and had attempted opposing Madan but you do not report or escalate. Answer this one also for me, please. Someone. Yes, no, quickly. We are reaching one hour. We need to go fast. There's a lot to discuss. Some more poll coming up. The response could be similar for the first one also, by the way, right? Colleague, oh, wow. said, or maybe we both have hand in that. Yes, please go ahead. Sorry, maybe one thing would be uh, Madan is in higher end authority or something. Thank you very much. Which could be the cause, the reason for the first case, previous case also. That Madan is my boss, Daman is my boss, you are my boss if you have been doing this, or I am your boss if I have been doing this, either financial fraud or sexual harassment. And this is also operational risk according to me. The next poll coming up. In both last two cases, financial fraud and sexual harassment, you know, but you don't report. Because, and you need to select, 
one of these options. In front of you, 30 seconds to go. Please select your option. What is correct according to you? The person is senior to you. You are not comfortable reporting. The person is a good friend. You stand to lose him or her. The person may lose job. Organizations are taking such cases very seriously. Like this person is out. So you would feel guilty. The man lost job because of me. And especially during COVID-19 pandemic when there's so much pressure on jobs. I have other tasks to do. This is none of my business. 58% have responded so far. I'll do it for a few seconds and close the poll. Thank you very much. I hope you can see the results now. No one's saying other, I have other tasks to do. That would have been bad. But there is at least 18% people. There are 18% people who are saying this is none of my business. That is not correct to me. Right. But see, 73%. That is the risk that we see for ourselves. You know, but you don't report because the person is senior. But I'm surprised that no one selected the second option. The first one is a good friend. While well, at least before that, someone had said, and I believe even that is also correct. There may be this reason also that we two are friends, and then you don't report that the, the, the man will be unhappy and will not be your friend ever. So while we are discussing this, we understood the case, the cause, but then what? How do we resolve it? That's also we need to see. When we do risk management, identifying is not enough. We need to do evaluation also. Identification. Can you go on mute, please? Identification and evaluation only is not enough. We need to always look for mitigation also. And for such reasons, whistleblower policy or process was created in the organization. The man, now you can report even without disclosing your name. And there have been cases. It has been used. It has been used in many organizations. The whistleblower policy was a mitigation to this challenge we just, just saw and operational risk. Case three coming up for you. And this is a true story I'm saying. My previous organization. Let me tell you a little more with this correct. Can you work mute, please? Uh, Ganesh, if you're the host, you can mute. Yeah, I'm, I'm just oh, yes, I'm attempting to see that option. I don't see it option, surprisingly. No, I think you should be able to. But I, I hope you still have that option to unmute when I ask the question and if you want to speak. So I was yes. global VC manager. I was VP level and I was also member of the board. Then this case happening. We had an incident logging tool. Once we checked and found that there were no entries in that. By the way, the risk, this is itself is a risk operational risk. I was new to the organization. This is just three months. We used to meet once in a month. So it's happening in the board. We came to know, I mean, I came to know that there was a tool. So I said, so, okay, so we have not discussed this ever in the last two months. No one knows who owns it. No one knows what is happening. That is the risk itself. So I said, okay, let me take the charge. I, I will start looking into this process. And when we looked into that, we found that there were no entries in that. Good, bad, ugly. Very happy. Yes, please tell me. Anyone? Good, bad, ugly. There were 31 people. 30 were happy. One was not happy. 
30 were happy oh board members wow there are Mostly, no this yes. is avinash i have a say here uh, uh, on a ground reality we may have theoretically we may have the practices we have strict stringent guidelines everything is there is it applicable is it implemented in the ground situation is it practically implemented that's one point here yeah. now if, since you spoke about the whistle blower earlier yes all the organizations have the whistle blower are they have been used effectively i have a real time experience in my previous organization as well and one of my colleague raised a complaint on my on, on, on one of my managers and they took two, uh, two years to resolve the issue all right and that, that became notorious yes. and that particular that particular colleague became notorious and honestly speaking uh, f- female shaming has happened so these are the ground situations yes. honestly to be, yes. to be honest to be honest. yes yes i understand that that's also a challenge there is no perfect solution and we will always have to see the next step also if we could for see if we were wise enough we should have thought of that also that even if we start naming shaming is good right it works many organizations many cases no 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 what, I, what i meant not, not name shame the person who raised the complaint became the victim uh, became the victim I can, i can understand without you telling me i can understand that's what happened it, but, so i do not want to name anything or to go, de- go want to do not want to deal with it i just saw go go, go on with you and and this is why this is the reason exact reason people people do not want to be singled out yes. like they were they all want to be in a group of our our all to be a lot I we do not want to be among the people we want to be 10 plus 11 that's it yeah, yeah. no no i agree so, with you fully and some day we, we can sit again two hours only to discuss this point this is our policy today i don't have time but i'll attempt another another case another risk not this one another risk which where i will attempt to see how deep we can go we should go and in the past fire we had not been going yeah. so 30 people were happy my interpretation maybe also one of the reason that probably we do not log into the incident tool or yes. we, we do not want to be the person who does the takes the visit yes that's, that's my interpretation <laughs> yes thank you very much 30 were happy one was not happy my interpretation was a calm sea is not necessarily a good sign it appeared to be calm sea a zero recorded doesn't mean zero happened that's what i told the board it is only zero recorded doesn't mean zero happened we shouldn't be too happy we need to go deep it is not being recorded then we need to see why not perhaps people do not have the faith in the process that's why they are not recording daman daman shivdas here can i share one point yes please yeah it might be a good input see uh, this incident tool or risk register what happens is that is an official entry of the bank or uh, financial institution or any other place okay so yeah. what happens is when auditor comes a regulator comes you need to first supply that so that's one reason a lot of things don't go into it and there are many places what they do is a pre entry system where they have something else tracked to see once they have a clear case it is a violation then it goes inside so maybe that's a good practice which might be followed in many places so it could be also be a reason why something like this is yeah. not seen as an entry there i, I just thought i'll share this yeah no thank you very much at this point time we have spent one hour and my request or uh, an early warning if you want to do take it that way please allow me to extend this by 15 minutes if you agree otherwise i'll have to skip some discussions that i had planned to do all four in front of you are you aware of gdpr all four is saying are you aware of gdpr should finish in 10 seconds there are only two options yes or no Sixty-six percent voted, eighty percent voted, and interestingly, hundred percent is yes. So that's good news. Thank you very much. You see that hundred percent saying yes. So that's good news. Answer this one also for me, please. is this applicable to your organization yes no i do not know be quick please 
only 40% voting so far. <clears throat> Please do more because the results are changing and interesting output coming. 80%, can we do 100% this time? Eighty-six. We will stop it. Okay. Thank you very much. And this is how we have uh, reported: seventy-seven percent saying yes, but about twenty-three percent falling into that no or I do not know. So I do not know is better than no. I would say initial impressions were about two years ago when this came into picture. European Union. That means it's applicable to countries in the Europe. I'm not an expert in this, but my understanding, and I, I believe that is a correct understanding, that it may be applicable to almost everyone in the world. If you have, not necessarily that you have office in Europe, no. Or if you say it's applicable to your office in Europe, not to office in India, even that is not correct. If you have anything to do with anyone in the Europe, then this is applicable. Very uh, raw, dirty way of saying experts can define it much better. Going up to an extent, I ask the question, I have a question in my mind, I do not have answer to that yet. That as an individual, on my phone, I have phone numbers and maybe other contact details of people in Europe. So is this applicable to me? Do I need to be compliant? And by the way, if you are not compliant, the penalties are heavy. Penalties are very heavy. So we need to take it seriously once again when we are talking of whether operational risk or risk. Saying that it's not applicable to me may not be correct. So find out, please. And then if you say, yes, it's not applicable, good. After establishing it, absolutely. Hassan is one of your employees working from home during COVID-19 pandemic. He gets attracted by someone to provide some data in lieu of cash payment. Is this realistic? Is this realistic? Has it happened? I don't know. Can it happen? Of course, for sure. Definitely it can happen. And that's one of the challenges of working from home. Keep this in mind, please. This is operational risk for you. Well, six coming up, which says, during the lockdown, so first you answer this poll, participate in the poll, then I'll tell you the reason also why I have built in this question here. During the lockdown, were you eagerly looking forward to going back to office? Once again, I'll be too happy if I get 100% responses, whether yes or no, but Let's have 100% response. We have touched 75% within 20 seconds. So that's good going. Please come back to active screen. If you have logged in, please come to this screen. Come to this session. 87, so that seems to be the best so far. Last time it was 86. In five seconds, I'll close this. If you want to press your finger. One stopping, and this is how you have said, and this is interesting. But this is similar to 70 other surveys that had done globally so far. This is 71st today. 57%. What do I saying? Eagerly looking forward to going back to office. On average, it has been 50%. Some cases it went 80, 90, and 100% also in those 70 surveys, right? What does it mean? My interpretation that there is some pain at home. That's why we are looking forward, eagerly looking forward to going back to office. This is not only India, this is not only one, one company. More than 1200 people have participated in those 70 surveys so far from different companies, countries, different age groups, including males, females, students also. It means there is some pain at home. So I ask the next question, 
before that i'm showing you what had happened in earlier 70 surveys which i've said average your response current live poll is matching with the previous 70 also 50 percent average saying yes to this question right which means there's a pain so poll seven please tell me and this time you can select as many as you wish for that reason i'll give you a minute to respond this time what were the pain or are someone may say i'm still working from home so there is still a pain it has not gone so what were or what are the pains during work from home select all that apply start using the fingers please oh you have not seen the poll my mistake start using the fingers i'll give you a minute for this one because you need to select multiple options. No one has voted so far. Maybe you are reading it yet. Before answering, you are reading all the options. Okay. Ah, the results have started pouring in. But only 40% participation so far, less than 40, 40 actually. And yes, it's good practice to read all carefully before you start responding. Touching 70%, 15 seconds to go if you want to exercise the power of your fingers, power of your hand to respond to this poll. And my intention is I'll do analysis and I'll produce a small report and I'll share that report also with you all based on all the polls that have conducted during session today closing it now 87 percent. it seems that's the maximum we have achieved so far let's see the results interesting many of us had been working from home earlier also work from home was not a new concept to many of us some of us okay and many organizations in the past would have allowed work from home in the name of work-life balance what have you all said top reason top pain is 86 percent work-life imbalance how can we ignore this fact when we are saying work from home is new norm it's going to stay forever work from home forever, work from home for as long as required or possible, or hybrid 30, 70, 50, 50, 60, 40, whatever. It is such a big pain, work-life imbalance. IT, physical infrastructure, see, before physical, IT, physical infrastructure is bigger challenge. These two would be still obvious, but work-life balance, not so obvious. 50% saying miss the breakout of office as simple as that. How can we compensate for that? some getting boredom also while information security going less but because perhaps we are not experts in information security otherwise according to me they have been compromises made both by vendor and the customer no one is willing to admit no one is willing to put this on paper the physical security and information security of office cannot be achieved at home cannot be Right at the bottom, there is stress or fatigue, also one of the main pains 57%. So thank you very much. It's in line with the previous 70, previous 70 surveys, also. But I'll be happy to produce a report and share with you all from today's discussions as well. As I said, going in depth in risk management, I'm attempting to take this case, which is the closest to heart as of now the COVID-19 pandemic. About February, March last year, COVID-19 pandemic happened. This was the risk. What was the mitigation? Governments announced lockdowns. And in the past, generally, we would have stopped here. I identify, evaluate, and mitigate the risk. And that's why some people in the past used to ask them, what is the difference between risk management and business quantity management? And my response would be, wherever risk management stops, business quantities 
picks up and continues beyond that. Or the man says, "Is extension of this man?" I don't mind if you say that. If you want to understand like that, lockdown mitigation done, but that gave rise to another risk. What was that? Loss of business and livelihood. So companies came into picture to mitigate, and they said, "We will work from home." That was the mitigation. But we stopped there, and most likely, most of us have not understood and have not gone deep. Next step. That was another risk. We just saw the pains: physical security, information security, stress, fatigue, legality. It may be even illegal to work from home. Please go back and check thoroughly. Sedimentary lifestyle. Okay, we understood the risk. Let's do some mitigation. So, for physical security, information security, sorry, information security, code of conduct, NDA. We already had. Oh, I signed NDA 35 years ago. Do I remember? Code of conduct. Some companies say we signed it every year. The man repeat the code of conduct, especially companies' code of conduct. Good. And at that time, at the start of work from home, some companies would have reminded. Some policies were changed. Was required. So this is how it was mitigated. And then return to office started. Right. That was also a risk, or that would also give rise to a risk. Virus spread due to proximity. So what did we say? Yeah, return to office, but only one third to be occupied. Safe separation distance. Good, but that mitigation gives rise to another risk. The manpower is re reduced. So, what do we do? Assume this next one also. Virus spread through surfaces. That is also a risk. While we go back to office, what do we do? Mitigation, increase sanitization. Very easy to say. Ask your facilities department. The cost has gone up hugely, so that is the risk. You keep managing one, and it keeps giving rise to another. In the past, we wouldn't have done. It is required. We need to go that deep in risk management, whether we call it operational or reputational, ERM or whatever. So your cost goes up because your cost has gone up. So cost of your product has gone up. If you increase the cost of your product, perhaps sales will go down. So you don't increase the cost, which means your product profits get reduced. This is how we could go quarantine. When we said if you were suspected or infected, the month get quarantine. Don't come to office for fifteen days. Go back and check whether you were expecting me to work from home during those fifteen days. Big question mark. From people point of view, according to me, if you expect me to work from home, if I'm quarantined, I'm quarantined. Increase cost of your products and again reduce profits because generally you wouldn't like to increase the cost. Otherwise, sales will go down and again your revenues would be or profits would be impacted. Look at the last one. Increased medical medical costs also. Initially, at least in India. Maybe it was in other countries also. Whether it was covered through insurance or not, COVID hospitalization, COVID nineteen treatment. We know in India at least IRDA issued a special instruction. All companies existing policies should cover. I'm not sure what is the effectiveness of that or not. I hope we were lucky and we didn't have to use it. Then only we would realize whether. The companies were going with that order or not. I know which I have done just about a month ago when I renewed this year when I renewed my health policy. I asked specifically. They took two weeks to come back, and my insurance company has said in writing available to me now that COVID-related expenses would be covered through the same policy without any escalation of premium for me. While there would still be some if and buts which. They have not said, and I have not asked yet. And look at the last one. Your worst case scenario: if you have done this calculation, you are saying, "Daman, stay at home," but you still need to pay me. So there is a cost. Daman is not working, but you still need to pay salary. Where is this salary coming out from? Expectation is in a pandemic, up to seventy percent people may be sick, may be absent for up to fifteen days. That is the quarantine period. Please. Multiply with average daily salary. That is the cost. Have you budgeted for it? 
If not, let's go back and do it now. So this is how I want you to show. On this, then we can spend again two hours perhaps discussing very going very slow, maybe doing some calculations also, picking up experiences, making it interactive. We could have spent hours on this one slide only, but it's required today. Communication is very important in life. In BAU, communication is more important during crises. Mainly, I'm assuming in the session today, understand VCM, ISO 22301. Other management systems also would have that requirement, but we know in ISO 22301, one of the causes talks about the requirements with respect to communication. So I have developed this cycle. If you follow this, we generally will be in conformance of the requirements of ISO 22301 with respect to communication. So what I'm saying is who communicates, what, to whom, when, and how. Who in this cycle is the author of the communication? We need to be very clear. I was teaching yesterday also and we came, I showed and people said, CEO. That becomes specific. Sometimes perhaps you would write. This communication cycle is generic, is applicable to anyone and everyone. So don't say CEO. Uh, someone said the communication department. Communication department issues that communication in the name of CEO, for example. So the author is still CEO, not the communications department. So who is the author? What is the content of your communication? Whom is your target audience, interested party who would be receiving this communication? When can be said to be the time or the frequency of the communication? How is the channel, medium? What will be used, whether it's an email, notice, one-on-one, -on -one, phone call, published on the internet, internet, or in the newspaper, or in TV, etc., etc. Very old saying, it's said to be a Chinese saying, I don't know how and why, that every crisis has an opportunity in this, or we need to attempt to convert risk into opportunity. Look for opportunities in this. In the past, I would have struggled myself to say, I'm going through a disaster, crisis, risk, and just saying, find opportunity. And standard can write anything and everything. Anyone can say anything and everything. Is it even possible? Expectation is please attempt. And today, because of COVID-19 pandemic, once again, actually we have been able to understand, we have been able to see many cases so I want you to spend a few minutes on that as well. It has shown us that it is possible. So whether proved or not proved officially, um, but suspect is on China, that China is started from China or China did it, if you want to say that. So many companies are attempting, planning to move out of China. Who is gaining? India. And this is an opportunity for country itself or maybe some other countries nearby, but many companies are planning to move or some have moved out also perhaps. If you think of PPA kits, India was producing zero in the beginning. All were imported and most likely imported from China. Today, exact numbers not, not known to me, but I guess it has been in media that the production is to the tune of 1 million PPE kits per day we are exporting and most likely exporting to China also. All of a sudden, the demand for hand sanitizers had gone up. A main component in the hand sanitizer is alcohol. See what happened. Would have been unbelievable perhaps in the past. Sugar mills started producing hand sanitizers, a byproduct is alcohol there. This is how, and again, perhaps India is now <clears throat> exporting. Ventilators were mostly being imported. This is very difficult. Again, you know, I may not have all the proofs, evidences, but I'm still sharing as this is some learning. 
auto companies, car producers started producing ventilators. What is the relationship of a car brand and ventilator? Ventilator, I cannot understand, but at least in the news it was. We can attempt to go deep and see. Similar vaccine, why well, you know now <clears throat> India is was the biggest producer of vaccines anyway in the world and still continues in the beginning. India sent to many countries free and now exporting on chargeable basis, chargeable basis also perhaps. And you can think of whether you have gained. If you have, it'll be good to know. I'll st stop. If you would like to speak anyone that the month, we also have turned this risk or crisis into opportunity or we are doing better than what we were doing before COVID-19 pandemic started. It'll be good to know such examples. Hey, Daman, this is Musa here again. Yes, Musa. Oh, my current company during this pandemic. Can you name the company also? It's Exotel Technocom. Okay. So they are into cloud telephony service products. They are. So, when, yeah. Because most of the companies are working from home. Their traditional infrastructure does not support to take calls and other things. Okay. So it has uh, almost... Uh, 40% revenues has increased in last one year because of COVID. Very good. We can clap for them. Thank you very much. Anyone else? And if you don't mind, just write one, two, three lines. If it's allowed, you need to take care of your policies. Please write back to me. I hope you all have my email ID. I'll be happy to include in some communication. I would like to publish it to the whole world that this is what is happening. I'm happy to do that. This term also established in many companies, kind of a buzzword if you want to. Some, sometimes people said BCM was a buzzword, right? Then ransomware was a buzzword. Maybe GRC also was, if you want to call it that way. It stands for Governance, Risk and Compliance is an organizational strategy for managing governance, risk management, and compliance with industry and the government regulations. So when you're talking of operational risk management, I thought of touching upon this also. This is a definition from IBM. GRC refers to a capability that helps an organization achieve its objectives. So it's linked with objectives directly. So it's an important activity with a responsibility running right across the organization. So everyone is involved in this. It's not only the top management. And this is what cap 7 i says. Let's see what's in this video. Compliance force is much broader today. Audio video clear? Someone say yes, no, please. Yes. It's a real Thank challenge you. in the financial services industry. We see uh, impacts much greater. And we see our clients taking a lot different approach to managing this risk. One of the things that's driving this is now the source of compliance risk is a lot different than it used to be. We see uh, customer interactions, products and channels all coming into play and where these things meet is really driving a whole new source of risk, which is really hard for our clients to get a handle on. And so because of that, you know, we, we see clients taking a lot different approach to how they're managing this risk. Why don't, why don't we talk a little bit about some of those challenges? I think there's a few things that we see when we look at our clients and the way that they're addressing sort of or dealing with this situation. Um, I think the, a lot of compliance functions and more, second line of defense function more generally have a real issue with this new environment. Um, in one way, uh, they're not resourced to deal with it. Uh, we have uh, uh, an inflation of new compli compliance requirements. We have a, uh, a greater complexity than we've ever seen before in the regulatory space. And frankly, management has increased uh, an increased need for information and for really transparency into what's going on. So this creates a real challenge for second line of defense functions. Number one, in terms of talent. Number two, in terms of the tools and technologies that are available to the second line of defense function. And I think three, the ability to produce the right uh, visibility into the actual issues that exist. For instance, uh, compliance departments now, second line of defense, are not only responsible for uh, keeping track of laws and regulations, they're now also responsible for monitoring and testing the controls that exist in, in the business. And that's a, that's a completely new frontier that requires that uh, that banks have the ability to 
um, put a risk assessment program in place, and put monitoring and testing in place, which is a new frontier. And, and if you think about the skill set that goes into doing monitoring and testing, it's different than the traditional kind of legal and regulatory background that you'd expect to see from uh, a traditional um, you know, compliance department uh, of years past. You really see people have to understand operations, they have to understand customer experience. So again, they really I'll need to stop come here. Quickly, my pick was, I was aware of VC testing. I was not aware of some testing in GRC also. Oh, that's something new for me. As I said, I'm a lifelong learner myself. It's, it's new or it was new for me. So it's important is those are is risk, whether again, operational risk, ERM or whichever type we call it. Paul H coming up for you. Is operational risk linked to GRC? You have three options. Yes, no, I do not know. More fingers fast, please. 50% participation so far. Because GRC says risk only, governance, risk, and compliance. So the question comes to mind. Oh, the one, what about operational risk? Once again, this is magic figure, it seems, for today 87% participation. 93% saying yes, which I will also go with, but 7% saying they do not know. Right. Thank you very much. So, another term, IRM, we would have. Daman, yes. Daman uh, sorry, uh, Shridhar. So, can you help further understand, help this governance point? I always had this confusion between <laughs> governance at a policy level versus a corporate governance. So, maybe if you, with your experience, you have been at a senior level, can you help us understand more? Okay. Shivadas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. So I'm happy with the question. I may not be able to do justice today in this session. My simple quick answer would be yes, governance is important. And governance, when we call, whether we call that policy level, because every management system and every policy would say governance. Right? Assume we have 10 management systems in the organization. Every system is talking of governance put together all overall is one government. And you go on mute, please. <laughs> Governance at the highest level also. To me, again, simple definitions. I'm not going by the dictionary. What's written in the dictionary? When we start, nothing comes free in this world. No activity is free. So the moment we are spending time, money, and effort on any activity, we should be worried about its appropriate usage, utilization, effectiveness. For which we need to do reviews and monitoring. I'm junior, you are my boss, I need to be monitoring to you. Now I should be reporting to you, sorry, providing updates to you about that. You are boss, you have asked me to do some activity, then you need to be worried about them. what are you doing? So you should be reviewing. So this put together is governance according to me. Whether for one particular management system or whether for organization as a whole. If I have 10, I'm repeating, put all 10 together, this will be the overall governance. So we call GRC somehow. Again, I wouldn't know the reason why it was called GRC. Governance, risk, and compliance. To me, risk and compliance are kind of risk. Compliance or non-compliance is a risk. So we perhaps put these together. And I'm saying perhaps, I'm not sure. I can, can't do much better than this. If quickly, then I need to study and then come back. IRM is another term that we have been using and we are into extended time. With apologies, I'm going ahead. Set of practices and processes supported by a risk-aware culture. Culture, risk-aware. Again, I can spend hours on these phrases and enabling technologies that improves decision making 
overall the reason is purpose is to improve decision making and performance so an integrated view of how well an organization manages its unique set of risk definition from gartner let's have a quick look at this video also and again i'm in a plate full The business world is experiencing unprecedented change. Global expansion, emerging markets, nimble competitors, digital disruption, mobile staff, empowered customers. Businesses face mounting complexity as the spectrum and consequences of risks increase. Yet businesses must take risks not only to survive, but to thrive. The business environment has never been more complex and the risks never more difficult to manage. Protection of financial strength and reputation is paramount. 63% of risk management professionals reported being caught off guard by an operational surprise in the last five years, such as a competitor disruption, an IT systems breach, loss of key talent, among numerous other possible events. Knowing what risks and opportunities are on the horizon is key. Corporate governance trends, increased regulatory demands and board directors place pressure on executives to engage more in risk oversight. Successful organisations are moving away from silos and using an integrated approach to risk management. Led by the board with organisation-wide backing, integrated risk management considers risks from a top-down strategic perspective. Research shows that companies taking this more mature approach generate three times the profitability levels of those who do not. At SAI Global, we believe that when managed proactively, risk can be an opportunity and is a strategic imperative. We call this intelligent risk. Our integrated advisory, services and platforms operate across the entire risk life cycle to drive competitive advantage and future success. SAI Global makes intelligent risk possible. So not necessarily promoting any of those companies that have produced these videos, but I'm just using it was easily available, but good, quick information according to me. Some of these may be aware of this document also. Uh, this was available in 2014. I've not checked the current status. Past 7000, which was supply chain risk management, supplier pre qualification. Quickly showing this if it's still available, I believe it is, right? It can be used. It is available for it was available for use. Particular about supply chain risk. So it is part of risk management, it's part of operational risk management. And this is how it has been uh, written. Specified information in 15 topic modules, nine of which are designated four topic modules and six are designated additional topic. Quick look, you can see what is being looked from a supplier. This could be used as pre-qualification for your suppliers or vendor, vendor selection process or vendor management process, you could go into these. Looking at business ethics of that company, supply chain traceability. You know, for example, Daman is a supplier, but who is Daman's supplier? And who is that supplier supplier? How deep do you go? There is no end, perhaps I do not know. But it is expected that we need to do little more than what we were doing and it touches upon BCM as well. So you ask your vendors, what are your business quantity arrangements? Your vendors business quantity arrangements. Quick look at World Economic Forum report 2020. I have not been able to go into 2021 yet. That report is available. Right. Top 10 risks in terms of likelihood, impact, and then those categories shown in this report. By the way, World Economic Forum produces a global risk report every year, which is free. So you may like to download and use it. What we see is extreme weather seems to be at least Delhi has been too hot this, this year. Rain's not started yet. About three weeks ago, the, the expectation was monsoons would be 15 days ahead. And then every time three more days, three more days. Now it is delayed. Okay, Not even normal time. We know global warming has been going up, etc. With respect to impact, if you look at the middle one, climate action failure, weapons of mass destruction, 
extreme weather, water crisis, some of the cities, states in India also we know water crisis we are struggling with, cyber attacks, while coming at number eight, but if you look at ransomware attack, attack I think last two years, especially at least the reports saying during COVID-19 pandemic period, when people have been working, the attacks have increased. And that's one of the risks of working from home. Quickly touching on organizational resilience, which is my current passion. The standard is ISO 22316, and the current version is 2017, which I believe is the first version for this standard. So it's a relatively new standard. It's defined, organizational resilience is defined as ability of an organization to absorb and adapt in changing environment. As simple as that. Fall line quickly. For you all to respond. And by the way, this is the second last. There's only one more left, so don't worry. Operational risk management is an integral part of organizational resilience. Your options are yes, no, and I do not know. Two seconds to go, 62% vote so far. Seems that magic figure not being achieved, 87%, 75% this time. And I'll stop here. Results in front of you, 100% saying yes, and I'll go with that. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to come back and have long discussions ar around organizational residence. By the way, I'm delivering about two hours masterclass on organizational residence this evening from SOHM platform. If you want, please attend, it's free. Two CBD points also, a participation certificate to everyone and we have speaker from government of India and speaker, a speaker from UK as well. It's a big, big topic by the way, right? Journey forward, almost coming to close of my discussions. If we started from risk management, we move to GRC and IRM. The requirement according to me, the journey forward to, according to me is organizational resilience. It's the need of the R for every organization in the world. And the scope of organizational resilience is visible here. I'll spend more time in the evening session on this. But in the past, many of us, including me also, we would have thought BCM risk, crisis, information security, four, five, six, seven, eight put together will make organizational resilience. It is 20, it seems to me, put together. Go click tells me the one, this is all that happens in the organization. Yes, please. Anything and everything, right from the birth to the death of the organization, starting from the VMV, and that's what I'm proving in the session in the evening. Please, when you have time if you can journey forward as i said from risk to governance grc to integrated risk management to organizational resilience i'm saying my definition a uh, risk managing learning and continually improving organization is a resilient organization we all need to move to that direction it's not going to be easy i'm not saying that it's going to be easy it's a journey of transformation for any organization Organizational residence needs to be taken as a big chain program. The last one in front of you. No one is perfect in this world. I'm a long lifelong learner. Improvements are always possible. So I wouldn't mind even if you say no, but I would like to know your responses. Were these discussions useful? Yes. And yes, I would like to have more information about these so that we are able to bring some more session, some other speakers also if possible, or you say, no, this was not, then always write to me, what do you think could be improved? I'll be happy to do that. One, I would know myself that we have extended the time with apologies, I'll attempt that I reduce the content and examples perhaps I went to many examples and cases to keep it within one and a half hours or one hour. 87, once again, what is this magic figure? I don't know, why are we not going above 87%? Thank you very much. This is what you have said. 7% saying yes, 93% looking forward to more information also. I'll do that, that's the task for me.
thank you very much i am available if you wish to have any questions any input suggestions otherwise my coordinates in front of you please initiate linkedin connections i write almost daily on linkedin there is a lot to learn from each other otherwise write to me the response is guaranteed to the best of my capabilities what are we ask what are we discuss i just have a look at chat box also if any questions you can ask question unmute yourselves i am stopping share and my request is switch on cameras please i would like to take a photo here also and if you don't mind i would like to publish to the world on social media you all will become the global celebrities also can we have cameras on please people don't like cameras on on, on saturday afternoon it seems uh, man sir like one quick piece of question if you spare couple of minutes uh, tell me please yeah uh, in terms of resiliency which, which we were speaking right so i have a question here usually uh, post resilience when resilience fails resilience chain breaks we start the business continuity right uh, business continuity should not be part of the our resilience part we 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 ensure that resilience is there and we we are continuing with the business no interruption happens is there and interruption happens yeah. and we bear the risk and we continue the business okay if resilience is down then only business continuity starts right it will recover another. i just want to understand now it's good you asked this question the challenge is that answer will take 2 hours and it has it has been arranged by chance for you in the evening and it's complimentary just like this session please join that session there's a lot lot to be clarified on this point people people when i say people the world has not understood the term all natural resilience and that's why i'm attempting to do that my bit i'm doing as many sessions as possible as possible on all natural resilience that's the need of the art but that doesn't mean bcm is not included or rsc is not included all all please i i went fast on that 20 boxes bcm was there thanks sir looking looking forward for yes. uh, so cameras on if you don't mind there are not too many but i'll still take a picture give me your best smiles if you wish and thank you very much with that i'll pass it back to bala thanks bala thank you daman sir um, <clears throat> one of the feedback that i have taken is uh, the answer to poll 10 wherein now i know that people are expecting more sessions on grc irm or so that will also help me to arrange more sessions yeah. to satisfy the needs of the chapter members as well right so i will reach out to you as well and to rv sir i know that rv sir was there in between he had asked some questions and to rv sir to ensure that we get more good trainers like yourself who can help us understand the basics of organizational resilience and like what avinash asked us where does organizational resilience start stop and where does business resilience start so i will arrange more sessions on this thank you daman sir thank you thank you participants for coming in and encouraging us have a good day and all the best Thank you. And stay safe. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you so bye -bye. much. Hope to see you in the evening. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you.